I don't let that fade out. Catchy Paul in Dreamy John off of the brand new album by Jake Armitting. The name of the new album is called Cosmos in the Chaos. Time right now is 2.34, 34 minutes past the hour of 2 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. And you are listening to WSCALP Portsmouth Community Radio. My name is Sean Henderson. The name of the show is Stay Tuned. Thank you for tuning in via radio and via TV if you are watching. Today's guest, coincidentally enough, where I just played that song, is Jake Armerding himself. Hey, Jake, let me uh, make sure you're up here. Check, check. Thank you for having me. You betcha. All right. Thanks for coming in. You're sounding good. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be here. Uh, well, it's a, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. And um, first thing I want to say is I listened to the album on the way down from work. Mm-hmm. I was driving down to the station today. I got it yesterday. I was going to throw it on my iPod, and I couldn't find my iPod anywhere. But So I burned a, burned a copy off the files you sent me. Old and, school. <laughs> the old school way, right. <laughs> and the only CD player I really have is in my truck. So it worked oh. out well is why I was driving down here. But it was just, it sounds so good. So my hat's off to you. It's, Thank and, you so and congratulations. much. Congratulations. Well, I know a lot of music uh, comes across your desk, so that really means a lot. I appreciate it. Well, that. yeah, I appreciate you saying that too. But I mean, seriously, it's good. It's real good. Definitely the best thing you've done to date as far That's as how uh, I feel. solo stuff. Yeah. You always want your newest thing to at least to, to, to be under the delusion that, that it's your best thing until, I don't know, sometime later you right. realize that it actually wasn't. And, <clears throat> you know, people are a big fan of your earlier work or something like that. But in this case, I, I do feel like. Um, I stretched out as a as a songwriter and as a as a producer in a new way, um, which is always a good feeling to have. Mm-hmm. You know, to sort of feel like like you're you're still sort of coming into may, maybe your best work is ahead of you. That, right. That kind well, of hopefully that's the case all the time. You know, for the rest of your life, hopefully right. that's the case. You know. Hope so. Um, but you landed on where you've landed now is is uh, something good. So we're, we appreciate that. What I think we'll do is we'll start off with um, something live, and then we'll come back and we'll just dig a little bit deeper into the album if that's all right. Okay, sounds all right. great. <laughs> town so I say blessed are the poor those who go without blessed are the destitute and the fiscally in doubt I got sufficient joy right here be the world at large hope is on the house baby love's still free of charge I I've got what I 
Very nice. Jay Carmody live in the WSEA studios. A song dedicated to each and every one of you. And blessed are the poor of the brand new album, Cosmos and the Chaos. Jay Carmody live in the WSEA studios. Fantastic. Thank that was actually, I made a list as I was driving. I wrote like little notes uh -huh. on, mm -hmm. on all the songs. And that was one of my songs I wrote right beside a request. Oh, great. So I was going to request that one. So you must have been reading my mind. Great I like minds, that. right. <laughs> great minds think alike. And I love the line, fiscally endowed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to, well, let's talk about the album um, for a little bit. Sixth album, right? Is it that is. your sixth solo album? And I know you've worked with, uh, we can get into talking about that in a little bit. You've worked with, well, you've worked with a lot of people, but you recorded with Dad. Uh -huh. And um, you got a few other projects on the side, but um, this is your sixth solo album. Uh -huh. And when was, how long between the last one? The last one was. Uh, Quite, Songs in stained glass, or? quite a while. Yeah, I actually um, I, I put a couple out at once, which I wouldn't recommend to anyone. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> kind of become an insane person for a while. But um, I decided to put out a digital album that was called Songs in Stained Glass, and then sh very shortly thereafter, I put out, I guess, a more traditional format and traditional subject matter kind of record. It was all love songs um, called Her. Mm -hmm. And that, and those both came out in the spring of 2009. So it was maybe a year later, a little, little less than a year, I put out um, an EP with a duo that I was playing with. Um, the Barnstar CD, this other band I played with, Barnstar, that CD came out, I think, the next year. And then it was the year after that I started doing a project that eventually compiled the songs for this record. So it was kind of like... It was strange. I was reflecting the other day. I was noticing that technically it's been four years since I put out a full-length record, but it doesn't feel like it because mm -hmm. the whole time in between has been totally Non-stop work. Of, yeah, totally <laughs> full right. of, of recording projects, <laughs> mm -hmm. not just touring or anything like that, but, but just lots and lots and lots of recording, just no full-length records. Right. <laughs> now, uh, now, I know you play with a lot of people. Have you, other than those projects that you've worked on that were yours, have you recorded with other people as well? Because that's an, something that's, yeah, I, know, um, as a studio musician, I know you've done that as well. Right. I'll, I'll do, I'll do um, a, a bunch of sessions every year, mm -hmm. typically. So, yeah, I'll, I'll wind up on far-flung kind of projects, mm -hmm. you know, whoever, whoever calls, really. Right. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a yes man when it comes to uh, to session work because it's well, and you are as a, as my mother used to say, you're like a sponge. You know, you fit uh, in anywhere. You know? Right, <laughs> and uh, and that's and that's a good thing. That's a compliment for sure, especially in the musical world. You can it doesn't matter, and it I does, think you know, being able to diversify <laughs> absolutely is, is such a it's crucial huge. yeah such a crucial uh, element to to being able to be full time mm -hmm. in the industry. So. And I think it reflects in this album, actually, as I was listening to it on the way down here. It isn't, um, you know, people might, people put out albums nowadays that are just, well, I guess they always have. You know, there's a, there's a certain sound, mm -hmm. you know. And this album kind of, you, you take it different places. Yeah, it, it's, I guess it's all over the map as much as any of my other mm -hmm. ones, just because I... I've never really been able to limit myself to a certain genre because I grew up with so with such diverse tastes in music. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I was I was taking classical violin lessons, uh, you know, falling asleep either to '80s top forty pop radio or mm -hmm. the sound of my dad practicing his mandolin playing bluegrass songs. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know, just those three influences right there. Those are still, I guess, my primary influences. Right. Like I didn't have a, I didn't have a strong, for example, jazz influence as a little kid, mm -hmm. but um, started to get more into that kind of thing later. So right. you're an explorer as well. Yeah, um, it's like limiting yourself to one um, section of the library. You know, like mm -hmm. why why would you do that? Well, that's a good point. Not everyone likes, you know, nature books or whatever, you know. True. So, true. I mean, they stick to what they know. They but like there's got to be one great nature book that <laughs> yeah. we should all read, you know. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. a good point. Well, you're definitely, uh, you're uh, you're exploring nature on this. And I guess they, <laughs> that's the title of uh, Cosmos and the Chaos probably reflects that. Um, I wanted to ask you about the, because you, you said you started practicing um, uh, classical violin, and mm -hmm. you started that very young. 
Very young. Um, and young for all you uh, inspiring musicians out there is like four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, you can start violin very, very young. Yeah. They, they make tiny little violins. You've mm-hmm. probably seen them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I can have the perfect fit violin. It doesn't mean I'm going to mm-hmm. be able to play it. So as a four-year-old, that's that's doing something pretty good. And the fact that you would stick with it, is that something that uh, you were doing classical for one and you stuck with it and obviously mm-hmm. it grabbed you. Um, how did you, were you steered in that direction? How did you actually get into it in the first place? I know dad's a musician, but. Yeah, my dad, my dad started me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I mean, it, and I you, don't. And you leaned you down the, the classical route or? Well, it was more that, um, that maybe that was the, the, I mean, the Suzuki method, which is what I started mm-hmm. on, is just a great primer for any kid whose parents might might want to start him mm-hmm. or her on music. And what is that? What is a Suzuki? Well, it was uh, it was pioneered by, I believe, uh, he was Japanese, mm-hmm. um, uh, a teacher, a fairly famous violin violin teacher, named Suzuki, and uh, I think that the Maybe the most unique quality of the method is that um, it really puts a priority on the student being able to play something quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in fact, I think the idea is that the student can play something by the end of the first lesson. And that does worlds as far as um, boosting the confidence of the student. I mean, like, when you think about an instrument, there's so much to learn. You know, there's technique and there's, right. there's, uh, you know, um, how you would hold your hands and, and how you would stand and all those kinds of things. Um, and, and there's many other great things about the method that, that uh, someone wiser than myself will, uh, will talk about. But I know for a fact that one of the big selling points and one of the reasons it's been so successful is that it's, it's, um, it's a lot of ear training. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's based around the ear and... Because, partly because of that, by the end of the first lesson, you can play a little tune. You don't sound very good, right. but but you know you don't you don't care about that. You just care that you can you know you, you can recognize already recognize it right. You it's can already play play a tune, <laughs> a little piece, that kind of a thing. And so that I think that really helps to keep mm-hmm. kids going with it. So maybe maybe it's so famous and it's so popular because its students are the only ones who have continued. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> Well, maybe so, part. right? Well, that's good. Well, I'm glad that your father was uh, wise enough to introduce you to that. Yeah, and I mean, he saw. I think he saw musical capacity in me, or he wouldn't have. He right. wouldn't have started me there. Do you have other siblings? I have two other siblings. One, um, I mean, they're both musical, but one kind of continued with it, mm-hmm. and one just sort of dabbled. Oh yeah. Um, so you're, you're. Is it a brother? Two brothers. Two brothers. Say? Two brothers. Two brothers. And, and, and uh, my youngest brother Jesse plays uh, pretty often in my band he's a oh, really? percussionist yeah. and drummer oh okay good he's great nice but he started on piano right oh he did mm-hmm. <clears throat> well that's uh that's interesting because i was wondering if um you, you just never know if a, if your parent sees some potential in one of the children maybe it isn't in in everybody but yep. i guess uh the apple hasn't fall fallen too far from the from the tree in that family which is a good thing bruised yeah right uh, you got beaten you got beaten with those fruit man (laughs) um because your father is an amazingly talented individual he is for sure uh, he's a a natural (laughs) yeah he's really pure singer taylor armadine as well he's been live in the studio here he he joined uh, jonathan edwards uh when jonathan edwards came down Mm -hmm. so that was nice time now is 248 and you're listening to wsdalp portsmouth community radio 106.1 106.1 FM. How about doing another live thing and then we come back and sure. didn't really dig into the album that much, but we'll, oh, we'll do okay. that in the next time. How's that? <laughs>
keeps me from harbor to spit apart to spit starboard I'm going down mayday That's really nice. Thank Thanks. You. What's the name of that song? Mayday. Mayday. Oh, that's yeah. what I assumed. <laughs> that's what I assumed, but for some reason I wasn't. I mean, actually, it says Mayday right in here, but for some reason when I was looking at that, I couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I couldn't see it, so I was like, maybe it, maybe I didn't hear that song. <laughs> uh, that's nice. <clears throat> Beautiful. Thank you. Um, and another, uh, not only is Jake a uh, multi-instrumentalist, he's also a fine singer. Is that something that you... Uh, that uh, your singing abilities um, was that something you always you, you knew that you wanted to do? How did that come to you? How did how did you find your voice? That was pretty um, that was pretty natural. I, uh-huh. I um, you know, ever since I can remember, 
I've been watching my dad sing. Mm-hmm. So you know, whatever you see your dad do, that's what you that's want what to you do. Want to do. I'm, I'm sure how I'm sure that's how it mm-hmm. got in there. You know, I I don't consider myself um, the kind of singer, the level of singer that he is, but also the kind of singer he is. I'm a pretty different singer, mm-hmm. and so I it was an interesting process of kind of finding my own voice. Um, I mean, even having found it, I I can't I can't do half the things he can do, but but I, I sort of I, I kind of like my the sound of my voice for the stuff that I um, began writing mm-hmm. I guess I started out writing you know very bluegrass sounding stuff because that was my primary right I guess my primary influence but I soon took a left turn into I don't know every other genre mm-hmm. so now when you said you you started off on the bluegrass you started off the your first sort of paying gig was with dad and northern lights with northern lights Lights, yeah and uh how old were you when when you actually got into that well you were still pretty young right i started uh uh, i started as a special guest when i was about 13. Mm -hmm. so he'd bring you out on stage for one or two songs yeah i'd come up for the encore Uh that kind of oh i see right so it's always nice to have the family there as as part of the show and i'm sure that got a big applause and i'm i'm a little kid (laughs) right people like that yeah absolutely it makes for a good show i think it was a symbiotic relationship (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah it worked out well (laughs) and then you went on to record with them you recorded a couple albums Uh so that makes Uh sense that the uh the whole bluegrass thing was uh sort of your influence um i did say i wanted to talk about this album Mm -hmm. and i so far haven't done that (laughs) Uh, I have I have said how great it is. I just wanted to talk a little bit about oh, it. It was four years in the making, yeah. and um, when we talked at the beginning, you know, I was saying it's your best work to date, and you agreed. Um, I believe I read on your uh, on your website that you said it's the album that you want to put on your headstone if you uh, have a headstone. Right. Uh, so that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty uh, strong statement. And you also said at the beginning off air that you don't know if you could have said that about any other album that you have produced up to now. This is your sixth album. Yeah, I mean, may- maybe. Maybe we'll get together in three years, and I'll have a new album, and I'll say, forget everything I said about the mm-hmm. last one. You know, I I didn't even know I could I could write like this or something mm-hmm. like that. But I I feel like for myself, it's it's it feels like a personal achievement mm-hmm. in in the compositional aspect of things. Now, could you th- just tell me about how you came into it, the birth of the album itself, and maybe of the songs? Well, I came up with this idea. Um, in I think 2010, mm-hmm. uh, my wife and I had joined uh, a, a CSA, uh, like a farm share, mm-hmm. where you, where you get food every week. You buy it at, directly from the farm. It's right. community supported agriculture. And I said, I, I said, like these these farmers, they're they're just doing what what I'm trying to do and what all my friends are trying to do. You know, we're we're trying to, I guess, cut out the middleman where we can and just and just bring what we've got directly to an audience directly mm-hmm. to a uh, a demographic consumers that kind of a thing so what if i tried doing something like this what if i made my own csa called it community supported art instead of agriculture mm-hmm. uh and it would be once a month and every month there would be a song but i don't want it to be and and other um there have been all all different kinds of uh song a day song a week song a month right. projects but i I guess just the way the way that I like to record music or my own personal standards or whatever I just didn't want it to be to to have um that special uh bedroom quality to Mm -hmm. the to the music right I wanted it to to be like very professional and basically like you're listening to a fully finished album only one month at a time one Mm -hmm. song at a time so I uh, kind of put the word out to my fan base, and they really responded, and and they were like, "This is weird. Let's try. Let's do it." Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of a thing. And so I got all these people to sign up for just a dollar a month, a uh-huh. dollar a song a month, and basically built the Cosmos and the Chaos album from those from that CSA project. Really. C- so all these songs were basically sent out. They're all CSA songs. Yeah. So there's. I think there's, is there 12 songs on here? There's 11 songs. Um, what, uh, 10 of them are from the 2012 CSA, and then I've, I've kept it going because it worked mm-hmm. and people like it. Uh, and so one of the songs, in fact, the one I was thinking of, of playing next is from January 2013. Mm-hmm. So so all, that's to me, that's amazing in the sense on how this album sounds. I mean, the production on this album is just great. Well, thank you. 
appreciate it. I mean, we, we had to go back and do a little bit of tweaking and we remastered the whole thing in order mm. f- to have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, th- a through line. Um, and that's what co- consistency, kind of, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Cohesion. Mm. Thanks. Uh, so, I mean, and, and, and two, you, you, um, you produce a song differently depending on whether it's going to be part of a whole, mm. which is to say, you know, part of an album, or if it's just sort of a standalone track on right. its own. And that's what these were. They, they were meant to just sort of stand on their own mm-hmm. as songs. Um, I guess with the tip of the hat towards the iTunes generation, I mean, right. we're, we're, we're much more about songs these days than we are about Absolutely, albums. than album as a whole, right. But, you know, typical of me, I guess I wanted... I wanted both so Mm -hmm. i put out the songs and then i made an album from the songs Mm -hmm. but i had to go back and rework the songs a little bit to make sure they all fit together right well i think you did a fantastic job and it is it is you know it it depended if you didn't know this uh, now that i know that it was a csa project Uh i can i can hear the individual songs you know i can almost hear Uh month to month you know Uh that type of thing um but it does fit together i think all the songs fit together even though they are so completely different i mean there are for the people at home the name of the album we're talking about is called cosmos and the chaos and we're live in the studio with jake harmony um but there are there are you know the first song you played was a country song Mm -hmm. you know on this album and then there's good rocking songs as kind of um you know there's a piano number in there piano love song Mm -hmm. um it goes all over the place but it really does have a have a flow i thought it did anyway I'm, yeah it wasn't one of those things where i would go Ugh, you know it, it's it didn't stop me in my tracks as i kept going and right and i'm an album guy i i right. love the album format so when i throw something in i want i want it to capture my attention to sort of take you on a journey right through, and you know. i and i want to be able to listen to it straight through i don't want to just listen to one song at a time usually you know well, what's interesting is that i actually put a lot of thought into uh the, the sequence of that album and the sequence of the csa are quite different actually mm-hmm. I, I, uh, I I really tried to um, make the CSA make sense like for example uh, I started the CSA with the song I just played blessed are the poor mm-hmm. um, generally you're you're gonna start something off with something that's maybe a little up tempo kind of you know exciting mm-hmm. that, that kind of a thing you don't necessarily start it off with a sleeper although sometimes that's the right call right. Uh, and then, ju- just for example, I just remember it being August, or maybe it was July, August, something like that. And and I wanted a song that was that felt seasonal. Mm. So whatever song it was, it might I think it was Uncontrol actually, which mm-hmm. is which is a um, just sort of a like where's my head? I lost it in the traffic kind of a song, mm-hmm. whatever that means. Uh, and it just seemed like a good fit for August. Um, but then going back and saying like, okay, I'm not going to put this together as an album. It's going to be listened to all at once. I don't, I'm not thinking about like what the temperature right, is or exactly. anything like that. Yeah. I need these to flow together naturally. And so I, I reworked the sequence entirely. I mm-hmm. mean, it's totally different. So, That's interesting. If, if I'm gonna, when I go back and listen to this album, I'm going to like try to pick out the moves yeah. as, I'm, as I'm going through it. It's going to be, it's going to be an exercise. I'm probably confusing everyone <laughs> talking about it. Well, I think we've been, I've been talking a little bit too much and I apologize for the people no, at home. No. This is, uh, you know, I just find this fascinating. So time right now is about seven minutes past the hour and we're live in the studio with Jake Carmody. He's performing tonight down with, uh, with Dar Williams down in Newburyport. I encourage you to check that out. You still have your guitar in hand. How about doing another live thing? Sure. I drifted down I lost my breath But the blue all around Was lovely in death And my soul rose up And across the sea As my body drowned I found that I could breathe but the air up here is clear I'll be back tomorrow I ain't going anywhere I'll take my time 
I ain't even in my right mind And madness is sweet To the insane With arms twirling round Out in the rain And I would not presume I would not suggest It may be too soon For you and such foolishness But the air up here is clear Oh, I'll call them back tomorrow they ain't going anywhere We'll take our time And we ain't even in our right mind And the air up here is clear No, I'll be back tomorrow I ain't going anywhere I'll take my time I ain't even in my right mind I'll take my time I ain't even Very nice. Thanks. Sorry about Excuse that guitar. Me. It was a little out of tune. It's all right. I'm used to that here. It is live music after all. <laughs> Time right now is... Close enough for folk. <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> it's 11 minutes past the hour, 3 o'clock, and that was My Right Mind by Jay Carmody. And uh, as I said, he's performing tonight down in Newburyport along with Dar Williams. And um, I like that. Madness is sweet to the insane. Yeah. Um, and I'm a word guy too. I love it when people come in here and they, and they talk about the craft of, of, of writing the song other than in the music, and just wanted to just dig into that a little bit. Uh, like that, those lines stick out to me. You know, like uh, fiscally endowed. That was another one. You know, that's a, it was just a great term. I hadn't heard it before, and I really liked it. Yeah. Um, and when I, when I'm writing, if I come up with a certain line like that. Um, I love it, uh-huh. <laughs> and oh, I'm yeah. just w- and I'm wondering how oh, that how that a- oh yeah I bet. so how do you how do you write is it is it a is it a hit and miss thing do you have a practice are you regimented or are you not I'm uh, I'm not an incredibly disciplined person no <laughs> I'm really not I, I I try to write when I I tr- I always try to write when I feel like it and I also try to write when I don't feel like it. Which is most of the time. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. It's just so hard for me to write because, because um, I have that same perfectionist gene that that any right. artist probably has, or at least most of them. And I just don't want to fail. You know, I don't want to get in there and just write well. crap. Yeah. But but one thing that I've found, I think a lot of writers would back me up on this, is that um, if you're gonna write something good i mean something worth reading or hearing Mm -hmm. you're gonna need to sit down and take between 10 minutes and four hours just writing crap Mm -hmm. it's almost like you're excavating like a dinosaur bone or something like that and you have to you have to sit down and just write and and like the words are leaving your pen and you're like that's the worst cliche i've ever heard (laughs) and like that's 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 the most boring 
that's not even an idea, an idea or whatever. And, and you know, you try to keep the criticism at bay, but mm. you can't help yourself. You're always editing as you're right. writing. Yeah. And but an amazing thing happens after a uh, after after a time is that you will write something. Usually, for for in my in my case, it's something I didn't mean to write, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Ooh, that's that's kind of good," <laughs> you know. And it's like it's 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 once you're able to get out of your own mm-hmm. way, um, people will talk about. Um, there's a term that's that I'm not that I'm not recalling, but it refers to that that point um, where you're almost between waking and sleep, where you're sort of drifting off to sleep, mm-hmm. and your mind, your conscious mind, has sort of has sort of uh, let go of the reins and you're able to come up with ideas at that time that are that are wackier and and more special and more compelling and more amazing than any other time because mm-hmm. it's like you've gotten out of your own way like most of your most of your body most of your mind is asleep but there's still this part of your brain that's sort of functioning in in a semi dream state semi conscious state and and so these amazing ideas that I think we all probably have inside of us um, in different ways, they have a clear path to the surface. They're not consciously, they're, they're not constantly being um, battened down mm. by the conscious mind. Right. You're, you're not going, oh, that, I don't know, that's not that good, you know? Yeah. Those are the type of thoughts that keep you from actually writing, usually. Right. But, um, right. So, mm. I mean, that's... if. So do you get most of your ideas in that in that in that moment of between as you're drifting off to sleep is that what you're saying yeah Yeah. i mean also if i'll if i'll write for long enough i'll start i i'll almost start to enter that state so it's almost meditative meditative it's meditative it's almost a zen state Mm -hmm. um i've heard paul simon talk about that like he'll take a tennis ball Mm -hmm. and just sort of bounce it against the wall i don't know how long he does it for but i mean you know if anyone knows how to write it's that guy so i i would i'm gonna go buy a tennis ball tonight (laughs) right (laughs) but yeah that that kind of thing whatever is going to put your mundane everyday mind Mm. uh, to rest and let this this other part of your brain that is so easily silenced right by you know practicalities and is that something that you when you said you know you find a line that you like and you go oh that's pretty good is that usually in the moment or do you usually go back and say, oh, that, that part right there was pretty good. And I didn't even recognize it when I was writing it. They, they, they both happen. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it'll happen often when I'm, when I'm writing and I'll write something that I'll realize is really good. Mm. Uh, at least I think it is. Right. Um, and then there's these other times I, I'm, I'm sort of working on some words now that I, I, uh, I opened up a document on my computer because I'll write anywhere. I, mm-hmm. I'm not particular. I don't have like a special notebook. Right. I just sort of write. I, I write on my phone. Mm-hmm. You know, when I have an idea, I'll just sit there and tap away at it. But I found this document on my computer, just this, it was almost like a poem. It was complete, these lines. And everything rhymed. And it was so like not me that I thought that someone had really? like sat down or I had copied something down and it mm-hmm. wasn't mine. And yet there was still a little bit of the flavor of like the kind of thing that I would write. So it wasn't completely alien, but I was sitting there looking at this. I was like, who wrote this? Mm-hmm. Cause I really like it, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, did I write this? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm really good. <laughs> well, but see, that's, that's what keeps you humble. Is because exactly right. It's like, if there's something you really like alongside that, there is always for me, 10 pages this, of stuff that's you could well there's up. that yeah. but there's also this very uh very honest recognition that oh, like see. this sort of happened without me as much right. as it happened yeah. with me gotcha. you know like yeah. i sure maybe my my hand moved the pen but there was there was something else at work I here like i i i just don't feel like i can take total credit for all the best things that i've done mm-hmm. which is fine by me you know it's like the, the whole point is that they get done right, absolutely you yeah. know so i mean I, I think any true artist would would probably agree with that mm-hmm. the whole point is the art cool um you still have your guitar in hand let's do another live thing and then okay. we can then we can wrap it up how's all that right. or does it make sense to do a fiddle tune um fiddle. Mm-hmm. If we're doing one more. Well, we'll do two more songs. This one and then another one. Oh, great. Yeah. So, but however you want to do it. Sweet. 
so I, uh, I don't think they'd mind being teased a little. I, um, <laughs> my alma mater was Wheaton College, not the one in Massachusetts, but the one out in Illinois, which has a pretty strict um, policy of no drinking while you're a student there, um, which I think I remember I mostly adhered to. Um, but what was fun was that uh, a few years after graduating, um, I was asked to come back. It was quite an honor, actually. I was asked to come and, and do a chapel and uh, to, to uh, sort of present a chapel there. And what, so I said, yeah, I'd love to. And, and I came, and uh, the first tune I played was, was this tune, which is called Whiskey Before Breakfast. Whiskey Before Breakfast, Jake Armitting, live in the WSCA studios. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Time right now is 23 minutes past the hour. And we're coming up on the end of this uh, segment with Jake. But I want to, I, again, I've already told you that he's performing tonight down in Newburyport with Dar Williams, so I encourage you to check that out. I also want to tell you about a couple of the other, uh, the other, um, uh, the projects that he's involved in one is a one is a group called barn star he mentioned it a little bit a little while ago that's in, that's that album right there Macarelli's in this band Macarelli's actually on cosmos and the chaos as well uh -huh. um and he's a big collaborator of yours um throughout whenever, whenever he whenever i can yeah I, that's uh, wise <laughs> i wrote that guy in. yeah he's a he's a super talent i love he's a Mark. Beast. um and this album and another, oh, uh, um, just to step back a little bit, Barnstar is one of them, and Fretful Porcupine is the another. Fretful Porcupine. And uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about the Fretful Porcupine. You mentioned that's just a, sort of an instrumental duo that you have happening. It's myself. Um, I uh, I wanted, uh, I guess my own, my own bent in the Fretful Porcupine in sort of getting that going was that I, I wanted to create something that was almost like the. Uh, photo negative of um, what I did with most of the rest of my time. So in the Fretful Porcupine, I play violin and mandolin and uh, semi-hollow body electric guitar, but I don't sing and I don't play acoustic guitar mm -hmm. and I don't write any lyrics, uh, which is a huge uh, vacation for me because mm -hmm. those are the things that I find are um, just hard to mm -hmm. do to do well right and so i that's that's why i love that's why i love fretful is because it sort of gives me a chance to do all the things that i just do kind of when i'm on vacation mm -hmm. i guess <clears throat> and my and, team and, 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 i'm sorry in the, your, your partner in that my teammate uh oh, i'm sorry is uh kevin gosa and mm -hmm. he is a saxophonist and he plays um tenor sax and alto sax and soprano sax each one with 
with amazing skill and mm-hmm. amazing um, musicality. And uh, it was a real joke on me to meet Kevin and, and to start um, playing together and immediately deciding to form an ensemble, which is, you know, what happens when you find one of those right. people who's just such a great a great match for you. Because never in a million years did I think I would I would even have a saxophone on my record, mm. let alone, like, be in a band right. with one. You know, like, <laughs> I, I just... I was uh, I was very opposed to that idea, but then I had never heard anyone play quite like Kevin, mm-hmm. you know. And he he sort of he brings his whole again that musicality that he has he brings to the to the instrument, and suddenly it's one of my favorite instruments, mm-hmm. you know. Well, there is nothing like a sax, especially when it's uh-huh. played really well. So yep. I'm looking forward to hearing some of that stuff. Do, now, do you tour with that at all? I mean, I know you don't tour with it, but do you play out much? We do. It's it's uh, it's pretty rare uh-huh. uh that because we we decided to sort of gear our t- ourselves a little more toward um the how should i say um the the more um institutional type uh mm-hmm. venues like like we're doing colleges and we do some churches and we do some conferences and oh, things really? like that yeah. the sound doesn't doesn't really come across in in a like a bar no, yeah, or, I can or a coffee house type setting uh-huh. as well as you know kind of the rest of the stuff that right. i do Good guitar thing. based lyrical based that kind of a thing mm-hmm. it's um it's pretty heady stuff although you know not not for its own sake we're just sort of that, right. that's what we want that's what you're being. doing right well, that's so, not, it sounds like fun and that's good it's to great to have it's that, a great time to have that release in barn stars i said um you joined by Maccarelli and uh zach hickman he's is he in the band Oh is yeah, that, yeah. It's, Zach's it's, in the band too. Who else is in the band? It's kind of Zach's band, actually. Oh, is it? <laughs> he's he's certainly the ringleader. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, Zach Hickman, Mark Arelli, my dad, Taylor. Oh yeah, I didn't know he was in it. Armoring. Yeah. Yep. He's uh, holding down mandolin and tenor vocal duties, and then Charlie Rose is playing banjo. Oh yeah, banjo. great. Mm-hmm. He's a great uh, instrumentalist as he's well. He's great. He's very good. And I know you guys are getting out there. Pro- you're probably doing more of this than you are the Fretful Porcupine with the Barn Star. They're about tied, actually. Oh, really? It's, it's yeah. really hard. Uh, Barn Star, it's, uh, Barn Star has a tough time aligning I imagine, its, you know, its, the star, in, its right, Barn Stars. Right. Uh, there's just, uh, everyone's got so many projects that they're mm-hmm. involved with. I mean, each of the musicians is pretty in demand and, and is um, ha- sort of has their own career going, right. that kind of a thing. And so whenever we can scrape out a date, it's just a huge party. Yeah, it sounds like we, And they're all cover songs, right? I mean, is that No, that's not no? true. There's, uh, there's uh, at least there's at least four or five instrumentals. I mean, instrumentals, uh, originals. Oh, yeah. Mark Arelli contributes, I think, two or three, and then my dad has one as well. Oh, yeah? Okay, I'll so, look into that. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, well, that's that sounds like fun. I know Mark had talked about that. I never picked up the album. I'm so oh, it's, I'm glad you brought it's that. It's a up. great record. I can say that because I'm only a fifth yeah. of the band, <laughs> but it's it's fantastic stuff. Yeah. And, and it's just a ball when, yeah. we, when we get together. Oh, good for you. I'm glad you're having fun. I'm glad when you're having fun in everything you're doing, actually. Yeah. And the name of the new album is called Cosmos in the Chaos. Brand new, branch spanking new. That's what it looks like there for the people at home. Um, and that is a great album too if you want to learn more about jake go to jakearmiting.com and i encourage you to check out the csa thing that's mm-hmm. on jake's website and one one question i had to go back to the csa uh-huh. you said all of these people are paying so much a month to be part of your csa right and at the end of it you produced an album with all those songs is there anything special that i get i mean this is i mean it's all special uh-huh. don't get me wrong but now I'm buying this album when I've already got all the songs. You know what I mean? Um, well, as part of CSA, what is there? Is there any other advantages? I'm, to I want to sell it as best I can to the people. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. no, no, no. I, I see exactly what you're saying. Um, well, there wasn't. Yes and no. Like last year, if you had that album in hand, which you couldn't because it wasn't made yet, right. there was really no advantage. But this year, for one thing, the CSA. I mean, the CSA is a new song every month from mm-hmm. me. Um, so there's going to be songs that you're getting as part of the CSA that aren't on that. that right, they're not going to be on album. But right. are, they, are they all going to end up on future albums, you think? Or? No, I don't think they are, no. actually. I, I, I wanted to do it with the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think future albums will be kind of culled from mm-hmm. that, because I'm not going to put on an album every year. Right. That That's just too much 
too much for me. Um, and then the other thing that I decided to do this time around in the 2013 edition was to include other artists. So I've got two different kinds of boxes that you can sign up for. There's one that I just am calling the Jake box, which uh-huh. is just a song of mine and a photo um, from an artist in Minneapolis who's kind of representing each month. And then th- the other box is called the Garden Box. So that has the song of mine, the photo, plus two more um, visual works of art and two, uh, two more songs. No, th- I'm sorry, three more audio pieces. Mm. There's a song from the Fretful Porcupines album, which is being built this year, month by month. Mm. And then there's two other sort of floating artists, um, which, of which Barnstar is probably going to be one. Oh, right. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah, that, that box costs a little more, but you sort of get this mini smorgasbord. Right. Of, and it's a um, constant flow of art into your, you know, it, into your life. Into so your the, life, yeah. Yeah, so if people, you know, it, it, and it's easy. <laughs> so you it just is, sign it up is. for it. it actually, is, uh, the, the site is called musicisfood.org. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the idea is that just you, you, it's almost like, I mean, it sounds a little a little healthy, but it's almost like nourishment, like mm-hmm. like getting new new fresh art every month is a good thing for your soul. I'd, right I'd like to think. So I say that every week here. I mean, really do. That's what we're on. Um, it is uh, especially live music here, and that's the reason we present it here. But uh-huh. hopefully, the people at home will go out and and pick up Cosmos in the Chaos, and then. If you go out and pick up Cosmos in the Chaos, that'll give you an idea of what you can expect at the CSA every month. Mm-hmm. And if that sounds like something you want to do, I encourage you to do it. I'm going to do it. So just so you know, you can be expecting my uh, all right my credit card number coming across your computer at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> Time right now is I'll be sure to share that with all your listeners. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> that and a quarter will get you a coffee, but. Um, <laughs> We have time for one more song, I guess, you want to throw one at us, and then I'll end with a song off of the album. This is that kickoff track I was talking about. It's called Favorite Person. Saturday, the sun is up. Down the bakery, get a cup. Walking down the subway grates. Wipe the sugar off my face. I hit the stairs, jumping down. Feel the breeze, the underground. Seven stops are in the way Till I see your face and say I love you Oh, I love you There's lots of trouble on the track I can't even call you back Why are you doing this to me? In my mind's eye I can see you waiting for me at the Met Stuck at Broadway Lafayette It isn't right, it isn't fair That I am here and you are there when you're my favorite person in this world I cherish you and if this world should turn into another one oh you'd be my favorite too day coffee smoking shafts of sun they're glancing off your haircut the crowds all part the traffic too to let us fall in love in new york city and down in new york city yeah. when the theater isn't good when you grin and say you could go for wine at mademoiselle's we sneak out like infidels and later on the one two three I hold on, you hold me, the train it starts screaming gears. You put your hands over my ears, and you're my favorite person in this world. I cherish you, and if this world should turn into another one, oh, you'd be my favorite too. Be my Oh, 
it in a millionth time When you're here, when you're gone When you let your hair down long When you put that dress on And when you take it off again When the doors are open wide When you wait just outside And a sun and roses hit your dress The trinity of loveliness When we all stand as one When they're playing medicine When we're rich Fantastic. <laughs> Song called Favorite Person. That was Jake Armitting live in the WSCA studios. And that you can hear that song off his brand new album called Cosmos and the Chaos. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming in, my friend. Oh, it was it's great. Great to be here. Thank All you right. for asking. And for the people at home, Jake's performing down in Newburyport tonight, so I encourage you to go check him out with Dar Williams. Go to jakearmitting.com if you want to learn more about him. Uh, learn about him, his music, the CSA program that he's involved in, or anything for that matter. You can go there and check him out. What I think I'm going to do is uh, play a cut off of, off of Cosmos and the Chaos right now. The name of the song is called Why Have You Forsaken Me? And uh, it's a great song. It just it's, it's definitely my favorite song on the album, tied with a couple of others. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to thank Steve, my camera guy, for being here today. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for watching. It's a pleasure. And um, this is Why Have You Forsaken Me? I've been on the run for three days. I know they picked up my sin. I can hear them crying out which way I went Nothing to be Awesome guys, holy crap. <laughs>